Hello, my name is Cal Moloney from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And I'm Rachel Renner, also of Richmond, Virginia, and also an anarchist. <laughs> and, <Surprise>. today, <laughs> and today we bring to you the news from Underground, covering uh, the story from yesterday of everyone's, I guess, most hated uh, family or hated person, as they say, uh, Fred Phelps, Reverend hey, Fred Phelps. He died yesterday at age 84, and I guess much to the I guess, celebration to many, for me, I didn't really care. It's not that much. Uh, I spend much time thinking about, I guess, people who, who do hate. I guess people of, of my own preferences. Um, but since he died, I guess that proves God hated him too. Right. Mm. Yeah. I guess we'll see where, where that judgment goes. I saw a little meme post of, uh, I guess, uh, Pinhead saying, <laughs> <laughs> "Welcome. You know, we have such great sights to show you." Mm. And so, I guess we'll see how he does well with the Cenobites down there. But the sodomy. Yeah. The sodomy. So first, you guys are familiar or not familiar with uh, Fred Phelps. Here are some facts to go along with uh, to supplement this information. Many of which I did not know before today. I just wrote him off as a tacky mofo. Yeah, yeah. so did I. There's actually some <laughs> interesting things about this guy's past that uh, would not be you'd be, I guess, likely to to know about. Um, aside from his uh, God hate facts, uh, protests at uh, funerals of. Uh, gay people who die, homosexuality, or uh, soldiers at those funerals, because I guess he would say that that's God's way of um, hurting you or lashing out because of society's tolerance of, um, I guess, other would-be sexual preferences. And so he picketed at more than 50,000 events. Some of them included Lady Gaga concerts and mm -hmm. a whole list of other stuff that would put South Park to shame in their attempts to criticize, I guess. Can I read off yes, the list please, real quick? Please, please. Okay. People targeted by Fred Phelps, Ronald Reagan, Princess Diana, uh, Chief Justice William Rehnquist, uh, Reggie White, Sonny Bono, the entire Jesus Christ Church of Latter-day Saints, Atheist, Muslims, Matthew Shepard, Fred Rogers, ooh, that's dangerous, um, Heath Ledger, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert, Bill O'Reilly, Jews, Roger Ebert, Catholics, Australians, Swedes, the Irish, various U.S. soldiers killed in Iraq, and then just showing up at a lot of high-profile funerals, usually involving the massacre of children. So, yeah, um, he... They always claim to be very non-profit, though they did have tax-exempt status. Right. <laughs> and so, you know, the the visibility of their operation was always hedged off by, oh, we're not trying to, you know, like, gain money by getting a bunch of publicity. The end game is still pretty nebulous. I'm kind of expecting him to pop up Andy Kaufman style and say yeah. he was working <laughs> for, you know, LGBT people all along, this you know. Time. This whole time. <laughs> And most of the members yeah. of his uh, Whisperer Baptist Church are members of his family, uh, mm. including he had 13 children. One of them, interesting enough, though, uh, estranged, was an atheist. Uh, so I'm kind of curious about, I guess, that kind of relationship and how, I guess, that estrangement came to be. And that, I think his name was Nathan or Nate, who mm -hmm. came to that position to disavow all of it. Um, I guess in terms of his uh, rejection of, um, I guess, that kind of authoritative rule. Not towards uh, religion, but I guess I would imagine it's his father's role. They didn't mention where Nate was along the lineup of the 13 births, but they did mention that Nathan um, remembers back when his father was sort of in the civil rights activism thing as an yeah. attorney, that his father used the N-word copiously, which the other siblings aren't backing up, so Nathan might have been one of the first kids out of the chute and... Kind of saw him before he got his indoctrination down. So I don't know. That would be interesting to find out where along the line of Nathan was. Which actually kind of leads to some of the things that I had no idea about this this strange just fellow. Uh, that he was a civil rights attorney. Mm -hmm. uh, he would take up a lot of cases against discrimination against blacks. And he would, himself would go out there to help them. Uh, whereas many lawyers wouldn't. And maybe because of availability. Maybe because it was cheap and providing those services. But... Uh, it's interesting that that's how he started off in the 1960s as a civil rights uh, lawyer trying to take up these cases against discrimination. So I find that to be quite uh, an unusual turn uh, from, I guess, trying to support people, trying to support minorities, but going in this other direction where now he lambasts them and, but you know, brimstone and fire uh, yeah. at any opportunity that presents itself. To several people he worked with in those days are citing this saying, you know, I don't know what the heck happened to him. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so I'm sure if uh, you may have heard him, he he does a lot. Of, he did do a lot of cross country trips along with his family to protest in many many cities, including here in Richmond. Um, there was one incident that I found kind of surprising, kind of really hopeful, I guess, in the way that people are seeking out nonviolent solutions, for example. And there's a Missouri University. A lot of the students uh, came out there holding hands in hands, hundreds of them. And of course, um, they, this prevented the Westboro Baptist, I guess, protesting group to uh, cross that line to protest uh, one of their own students. I guess it was a football player who came out as gay and passed away recently. Yes, Sam. And so that's how they prevented them from, uh, I guess, reaching close proximity to, I guess, out their obscenities. And so I, I thought that was kind of really, really, really wonderful, I guess, to, to see that, I guess, that human spirit, to see that Ooh, bomb, to see how... Facing one's accusers. Yeah, instead of going, well, we're going to go tell on you, we're going to get the cops, we're going to get the Supreme Court, we're going to go and, uh, you know, try to find all the ways to kind of, you know, violently pr prevent you from getting close. But we'll get to that soon because that has to do with property rights and freedom of speech. But these are nonviolent solutions that other people had garnered together. Uh, as a community to, to I guess, to, to present a, a tranquil setting as you would at someone, a loved one that died. Um, and of course, this is, uh, I believe this took place before his uh, attack on the the Marine. There was a, a couple of years ago, back in 2006, his shirts appeared at a funeral of an American Marine who died in Iraq, uh, who was killed in Iraq. And so this, uh, launched a, a huge campaign against, uh, I guess this became a lot more notoriety after his protesting of Matthew Shepard, and this allowed for a Supreme Court challenge. In the beginning, uh, the family of the Marines sued uh, Phillips and his, uh, his church for, for millions of dollars of damages, and he was awarded them. He appealed it, he won, and then the father of the Marine appealed it even further to the Supreme Court to say, well, how far does this, can you allow this to go in, in terms of um, freedom of speech? And which is funny because then you had like all this outcry of support from uh, political rulers saying, well, you know, the sacrifices that the military makes should trump freedom of speech. And mm -hmm. so that was the, uh, the consistent of a lot of people trying to support. Yeah, you don't have to move freedom of speech when it comes close to churches or it comes close to, to cemeteries. And was that the end game, wrecking it for the rest of us? You know, yeah. Just being the, the boogeyman of free speech, Christ. Notwithstanding that, uh, no, it's, it's a saying that anyone has to die, uh, even if, uh, regardless of what color costume you wear. Um, I'm not really myself an advocate for, you know, you should hold someone a higher standing of appreciation for the death because they wore a costume. You know, any person who, who, who dies, sure, there'll be one or give, them, give everyone a 20 gun salute or that kind of a 20 more vehicle, uh, bar, you know, I guess, um, motorcade. Uh, yeah, nothing more sobering than a military burial ground, you know, that's the, that's the end result, the poppies of Flanders Yeah, fields. what do you think was going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Again, notwithstanding the, the fact that military, uh, the military doesn't do anything to defend your freedom. But still, so another person uh, who, who did die, not understanding that he was used by his own government, by the political rulers. I think it's uh, a quote that says, uh, the politician knows how to, use, how to sacrifice you best, I guess, to, to defend his own country. Um, not himself, of course. So this launched a Supreme Court ruling, and I believe it was 8-1 in, in favor of uh, the Phillips group. So they said, well, they do have uh, freedom of speech, Phelps. <laughs> freedom of speech, freedom to uh, to protest on these grounds since it's public spaces, and so they won. Much of the dismay of many, many thousands, I believe, of people, uh, political rulers, of course. But of course, within their own states, they passed their own laws. as well, if you're going to do it, you can only do it within like a certain amount of feet. feet. Yeah. yeah. So arbitrary measures, arbitrary lines. Still, doesn't contest the fact that. Uh, it's the property that they're on that should perhaps be contested, the public property, right? The, the lack of ownership around the grounds. I mean, you can have freedom of speech, but you need to stand on something to exercise your vocal cords to produce air, to create vibrations in the air. And that's really where the issue, I believe, kind of lies in. Not so much uh, what you want to say, when you want to say it, but the exact location of where you're doing it, it's, I think, is crucial to understanding freedom of speech. And I guess the entire, um, I guess, process of this and the way that uh, people are talking about freedom of speech. For example, uh, I mean, would you grant anyone to have freedom of speech in your own home, right, in your own living room? Well, they I could... certainly would. I think what is left unsaid is more dangerous than what is said. Well, that's true. For me, I don't, I don't, I don't for me, I don't, I don't care what, what you have to say. I invite you to my home. I have the, the I guess, vetting people, the, the people that I welcome to my home. You can say whatever you want to say. For me, personally, I have no qualms about words. 
I have, uh, it doesn't hurt me. I, I don't feel squeamish about words or thoughts or um, it's, I guess, mostly, I guess, the advocation of a person says, yeah, I would uh, steal from you in order to support my ideas. You know, I would have a problem with that. But of course, I would like to engage in conversation to understand why you hold those positions, right? Uh, to understand why you hold that consent can be violated and can be just if it serves the mob rule majority. I would like to have that conversation. But for those who are not comfortable with that, you should have every right because it is our home to say, well, I don't feel comfortable about this conversation and I may, I'd like for you to leave my home. Right? And the nature of public lands is they're not funded consensually. So what we are subjected to on them would follow suit that it wouldn't be consensual either. It's right. kind of the nature of the beast when you enter a, a situation like that, unfortunately. Yeah, like, and especially in the realms of like, you invite anybody can come into your house and say anything, and they want to yell on top of their lungs, scream obscenities, uh, you know, that kind of freedom of speech. Well, you have certain rules, sort of etiquette that you would uh, allow to be permissible. You know, some people have no shoes allowed when you come into my house, especially I guess in Japan, for example. Um, so you have these cultural norms that uh, are for or against, and that should be whatever the other property owner decides it to be. Right. Of course, if it's too restrictive, no one's going to want to come in. Right. If it's uh, very open and inviting, like I guess my own home or her own home, you know, more welcome to to have these discussions to talk about it. And the reason people enter, you know, the reason you enter a person's home, you don't go there to piss them off. You know, you you don't go to a cemetery to <laughs> talk badly about somebody's dead child. You know, there's a definite degree of intention. And like I said before, I mean, the the reputation this man has is of being tacky. You know, and that shouldn't be protected and backed up with violent force right. in a way, it's <laughs> under kind of, any stretch of the imagination. In a way, it's kind of like moderation. And the, 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 the moderators who use, I guess, Facebook pages or forum walls, you're moderating because you have specific uh, sets of rules that, uh, that are permissible and some kind of acts are not. Um, you're not using violence to prevent anyone from using their, their voice. You know, that's, that's called coercion. I just don't have to listen, right? People just don't have to listen. That's called social ostracism, right? Um, so there's there's a stark difference between that and the realms, I guess, the the digital uh, forums, digital places for for freedom freedom of speech. I mean, you would no more allow someone to come into your home and graffiti your walls, right? So why would you allow them to do the same thing on your forum walls or on your Facebook uh, post walls, for example? Um, but then this goes back but to... But the best policing comes through counteraction. Your, you know, your action as the moderator, the action of these students linking arms, you know, the action of people who hang outside abortion clinics and provide clinic support when the protesters show up there with, you know, their five foot tall dead fetus statue. You know? Yeah. It's like, we're here and we support your rights. I am perfectly comfortable seeing a five foot tall dead fetus statue as long as there's nobody who's going to imprison me if I go and exercise my rule of my body. So, you know. I would be more than comfortable having a I Hate Cow Club that has existed for quite some time mm. uh, and protesting. For me, that only encourages me. Uh, so for me, that, that's but that's my own preference and that's my own position. Um, for me, it's kind of <laughs> it's it's funny. It's kind of exciting that people would have the, the energy and the thought to think of me in such a manner. So, but in regards to again the public and private spaces, uh, what would end up happening in a free society when everything is privatized? You wouldn't have such groups coming out there and yelling obscenities in, in those kind of communities. Right, because now it's privatized. Because it's public, anyone can come out there. Anyone can get in your face. Anyone can walk in front of your house and stand there right at the edge of your property and and, and protest in front of your house. You know, say say all these obscenities and yell at you and stay all night if they wanted to. And um, some of them they feel they have the right to because they had to pay for that goddamn sidewalk right? too, you know, not voluntarily. Yeah. A lot of this probably is born out of resentment. Um, I mean, just to postulate for a moment, you know, if this guy for so long worked with the civil rights movement, perhaps he became resentful of homosexuals because he's like, well, they're not black. What right do they have to complain? Which is an argument more than one fundamentalist has brought up, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know where his psychosis came from. Maybe they can dissect his brain since apparently his family's not going to have a proper funeral for him. Yeah, that's right. I guess he says, uh, what, I guess the daughter said, we don't worship the dead here. So there's not going to be a funeral, which is interesting because, of course, Jesus I believe in, yeah, I would, not I would imagine that uh, Jesus is known for his dying <laughs> and the celebration thereof. Um, so that's interesting. But I guess, again, if you, if you want to find a way to solve this problem, everything should be privatized. Advocate, advocate for private education of property. There's no clear ownership 
of these sidewalks. Nobody owns it. So, you know, there's room for appropriation. There's room to establish those rules. I said, sorry, um, these particular hate groups are not allowed. Um, if you are into hate groups, there's a, you know, create a business, create a cemetery that advocates hate groups are more than welcome to come here. Right. Uh, whatever the rules and the parameters. The haters this. club. <laughs> right. It's no different. A uh, cemetery, uh, a business, it, it's, it's a ground, it's a, a fenced off, um, a homestead, a particular area that has rules that pertains to the property owner. So don't uh, get too distracted with the names of these places. Like uh, the rules for a cemetery are kind of similar to the rules that you would have in your own home. Right. So, but at least there's ownership. At least there's someone that can can say these are the rules that are permissible or not. Kind of like uh, the rules that uh, businesses that says no saggy bottoms allowed. Right. That's their property. That's saggy their own business. Pants. Saggy mm-hmm. bottom pants. Yeah. But if you like, <laughs> but if, if you enjoy saggy pants, then um, then create a business that caters to that. Create your own sign that says saggy pants welcome. Right. Um, but again, that can only be and permissible. And that lays it a, out in the open. Well, why, sir, do you hate saggy pants? And right. that might cause the business owner to reconsider. You know, don't, don't, you don't let own, bigots keep it bottled Right. Inside. You don't own your reputation. Your reputation is only in here. It's not something tangible. Right. So that's something so you can still contest. And then you'll find uh, the dwelling of the, I guess, the businesses that advocate for such restriction of uh, opening their markets to, to people, those kind of niche businesses, would eventually dwindle even smaller and smaller, and with it, their own cultural norms, right, for such uh, hostile obscenities towards um, people they just don't uh, just, I guess, agree with. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of what, what's going on right now with here, and it's kind of funny because, of course, the Supreme Court says, well, we support your freedom of speech to be able to say whatever you want, but, of course, when it comes to, like, local courtrooms, if the judge doesn't like what you're wearing, he'll just hold you in contempt of court and throw you overnight mm-hmm. into a cage. So don't be misled into thinking that the United States or the Supreme Court thugs have your best interest. They don't. This is a distraction. It's all bread and circuses. In reality, people do go to cages because they try to, I guess, advocate and exercise their freedom of speech. And that's not what ends up happening. It's a not, blue uh, costume and a black moo does not make you immune to butthurt. Yeah. That's why they have things like that. You didn't call me, sir? Yeah. All right. Mm. You didn't call me, your honor? Contempt mm. of court. See you in jail. Well, here's to the passing of a colossal joke. Yeah. Fred Phelps. Fred Phelps. So take good care, guys. Ooh. My name is Kyle Mullinane from Liberate RVA. And I'm Rachel Renner, also Liberate <laughs> RVA. Take good care, guys. See you guys at the Victor Party.